Okay, good morning, everybody. And uh, today I want to talk about the particle size analysis. And in our, pre in our CAT 2, we have uh, many different uh, technology. We have XPS, we have TOF SIMS, FDIR. Yeah, last talk I talked about is a, a surface provider. But uh, in our lab, we also have all uh, like uh, data size. That is uh, for the particle size analysis. In the very soon, maybe in just a few weeks, we already place the order. We have a new particle size analyzer will installed in our lab. So that is for like a, a little bit bigger particle. For, for some users, they are working on civil engineering, manufacture, or some project, their particle is very big. And they cannot make a stable suspension, cannot use a set sizer. And then that instrument is for you, and then you can use that to do analysis for like particle of few, few micron, few 10 micron, even one millimeter. That is possible. Okay, we will yeah. have you and talk about that later. Okay. So before I start to talk about the particle analysis, I just feel, and I still see how some users leave some unknown stuff on the desk and leave unfriendly environment for next user, just keep everything neat our lab and don't leave any stuff. Otherwise, probably your stuff will be discarded and all maybe can harm to next user and because unknown chemicals. Okay. So if, during the experiment, if you have any abnormal issue, immediately report and then so avoid the further damage. For any publication with based on the result and the generated in our lab. So please put in the acknowledgement in your publication like this. And if you cannot find it from our website, you can contact me to get this text. Okay. Okay, next now we are talk about this and, uh, and this main topic and the particle size analysis. In this presentation, I talk about the, the three and uh, Topic. The first is this uh, dynamic light scattering and called that DLS. And the second, I talk about the Z potential. What does Z potential mean here? And the third one, talk about the laser diffraction analysis. Okay, so is the particle, you know, and it can be different shape. And we use particle a lot in our in our research, the biological and civil engineering, mechanical and the material science, we use a lot of particles. And this particle can be different shape, can be not a sphere, not a rod, not a shell, this core shell structure, or this flake, or some fiber for this, the like protein, like this structure. All this, when we're doing this research related to particle, the particle size matters. So we want to know what is the size is, what's the distribution. And also for this particle, the size, if you did some reaction or synthesize and or, or functionalize, you want to see the particle size change. Okay. So that is uh, and the particle analysis, what we do. So next is, uh, for the method, okay, for particle size, what kind of method you can know the particle size? Okay, of course you have many methods. For example, the smaller particle, you take TM, you can, based on TM image observation, you can measure, you use it based on some sort of way, also can count the number, can the distribution. You get TM, you have an idea about your particle size, particle shape. And SEM for big particle, also you can look at. For optical microscope, you can look at this. And then for the measure, besides this uh, op besides this microscope method, you can use like a sedimentation. And then this method is observe this particle, how quickly to sediment the bottom based on the velocity, you can calculate the particle size. Okay, so this and uh, in our lab, we use the light scattering method. The light scattering is a 
that is basically two methods. One is a dynamic light scattering. This one is a DRS measures fluctuation change of the intensity of the scattered light. Okay, another method is uh, this use uh, static light scattering. Also, we call it like a laser diffraction method. So this is measure total intensity of the scattered light. So this size result is dependent on the use the technique. You use a different technique, give you result or will be slightly different. That is normal because you use a different technique and they give you based on different property. Like this. So for light scattering, this method generates is uh, like this. This is a laser light. Okay, this is a particle. So this particle it have to be well dispersed. Whatever you use, uh, use the dynamic light scattering or laser diffraction method. If these are glomer present, they just uh, treat it as a big particle. You have to be well dispersed. And then you can use a flow cell or closed cell, and then you get the detector, detect the intensity of this and scatter light. And then based on intensity analysis, particle size. That is the general idea for this. So first I'll talk about this Norwin Zeta size ultra. So this is what we have and for DRS. For this one, see the dynamic light scattering. And then we use a light source and shoot on the sam this uh, sample and this uh, suspension. And then we collect. For well, this one here, we call it a brown motion. Why here is a particle is moved, the particle moved. So a particle that is, is a rounder removed because the particle in the liquid, for example, in water. And this particle and the water, they have a collision. They have a collision and then this particle will be moved. Okay, so that means, okay, this, this move and discovered by the brown and it's called the Brownian motion. Okay, this motion and uh, depends on the size. You can imagine if you have a very big particle compared to a small uh, water molecule. Okay, the water molecule could collision and this uh, big particle will be moved very slow or even no movement. If a very small particle collision with the water molecule, they will move much faster, very quick. And so that is, uh, that's why you use the brown motion and you can understand that is a small this particle size, small or large. So that is used brown motion. So this, and we measure the time dependent. And then is, uh, if it's more, move very quick, we know it's a small, is very slow change, we get it large. Of course, we know the just, uh, Qualitative analysis, we will get a number, we will get a quantitative analysis for that. Okay, so next, and then we go here. So this show, so the analytical assumption constraint. So this is a particle, the big particle, small particle. The big particle, as we just uh, said, this is a big particle the collision with uh, liquid molecule, they move very slow. The smaller particles move very quick. This very quick is the intensity because if there is no movement, so the laser scattering, the intensity should be constant, should be alive. But this particle, because it move, once it move, and then this intensity going down, going here, and going down this. And shining another one moved here and then going change. So this change and then reflect how quickly this move. So these particles are moving in the brown motion only, no other movement. If your particle in the suspension not stable, the sedimentation also occurring, this will affect the measurement. Okay. So second is the suspension should be very stable. Okay, the diameter use this method in measured is a hydrodynamic diameter. 
they have a different method that give you a different name. This is based on the hydrodynamic, based on this particle, how diffuse, and this get diameter. So the viscosity of the suspension should be a note, a significantly different from the viscosity of the pure base liquid. You cannot make very traded like this, very and uh, very heavy, like a country too high there. So this relation use the equation called the Stokes-Einstein equation. So this laser shoot on the particle and this move, and this, this move, we have a detector, we have a correlator, a correlator. Basically, they move the zero intensity. And after one minute, microsecond, two millisecond, see how they change, you get the intensity. One millisecond, two microsecond, and then, this compared to the zero second, this intensity, they get a correlation, correlation based on the time. And this correlation has changed. And then based on this, and it convert to the particle size. Okay, that's it. So the, based on this equation, the D is the is velocity of the brown motion, the diffusion coefficient, this. This D is the diameter of the hydrodynamic diameter of the particle. Okay, based on this move, how quick, and then you get this D. In this equation, this uh, hydrodynamic diameter, to get this, and uh, you have an idea. You see here, the diameter measures this, and this particle size is based on the double layer of this, and this potential will show you double layer for what that, okay. So in this equation, you see there's no reflect index. Okay, the only the how the diffusion and they get this one. So that is the DLS. This method is how that is important, how this is widely used. Because in this size measurement, they didn't use reflect index. You said uh, during the training, you asked me to input the reflect index of the material or what's the reflect index of the liquid, why we need that. So that one is for the further data conversion. If you use the uh, intensity and the size distribution, that is raw data based on this equation. On that, on this equation, no reference index. Even you don't know, or you put the wrong number of reference index, index, you still get the right and the size distribution based on the intensity. So that is uh, important. If you synthesize new particle, new material, or functionalized, you don't have accurate reference index, you still use this DLS, you get accurate in the size, okay? So reference index ask you to input is only, only when you want to use the intensity distribution and intensity convert to the number and this convert to the, uh, the volume and, and later next slide I will show you that and then you use that. So this is a general idea. If you have a quickly is this one, it means move quick. And then based on this correlation function and it generates the particle size is a small. If this uh, particle is a uh, brown motion is small, is uh, slow this here and get this based on this one generates a big particle. If this here, if you have this, and also have a small here, like noise, these peaks here, and then probably you have a small and a big, you have both. And then you get the correlation is like this shape. And then you get this big particle, small particle, you have mixed the sample in this. Okay, so that is generally how they generate the data. And then, so on this image here, we basically, you get the intensity is like this here. And then you can use a reference index, use a software, you can call it to volume the ratio or number ratio. This example give you an idea. For example, if you have a two particle, one is five nanometer, one is 50 nanometer, and the number is one to one, but their volume is a one to 1000. If based on the scatter light, and that is one million difference, that's one million. 
So that give you idea. So if sometimes if you use this, you didn't see the second peak. If you convert to this number, you will see a new peak come out because this even same number, but the intensity too low, give you idea. Also tell you, if your sample, you have a big particle, very big particle, probably the small particle is invisible because the scattered light compared to the big particle is, uh, is too small, too small mark. And then you mostly you look at big particle. And so that is, uh, uh, yeah, the single like uh, remove, prepare your sample, remove the dust or remove the big particle or no agronomers, that is how important it is. Okay, another is uh, like to talk about the detection angle. So for this DRS, so they have a three different angle we can choose. So this sample here is the back scattering, this angle, this uh, 173. The forward scattering is uh, on the 13. This is uh, here is a zero degree and then the 13 and the back and the side scattering. So multiple angle, they always can use for example, do, doing for the molecular weight or concentration analysis. But basically for this, this uh, size analysis, basically we use the back scattering. If you use a forward scattering, they will go through this cell. If inside you have a big particle, they will be affect much about your result. If you back scattering, this is a fair advantage. For example, if you, this backscattering, they also called no invasive backscatter. For this one, they can avoid multiple scattering. If you have a particle here, a big particle here, they have get scattering, go inside, go through this one, also another scattering could multiple scattering affect your result, affect the intensity, because get intensity, get weak. And also contaminate, mostly the dust, big particle. If you go here, go the site, just get in and then get back. And the node goes through, there will be a little chance to touch, to scatter from the dust. Okay, that is a fair advantage. So that is a recommend to use back scattering for your DRS analysis. Okay, for sample concentration here, so for the DRS measurement, the result you get from DRS should be concentration independent, okay, independent. And the, each type of the sample material has a own and has a ideal concentration, okay. So that the concentration, if too low, there is a light intensity, scattered light is too low, cannot measure. If it's too high, will be cost the multiple scattering, okay. You affect the result, your result will be independent of the concentration. So that's why you need a method development. What is method development? So when you develop this method, you can determine the correct concentration, what should be. Even we have our guidance and general range for the particle size. That is for just a general. Sample by sample can be different. You can prepare like a several different concentration and then you measure the size. You see, based on the concentration, the size change or not. If your size, something changed, probably the concentration too high or too low. You find or feel maybe the medium, the concentration, the, con the size is no change, is the same. That is uh, concentration independent. That concentration is good. So you develop this, during this method, you develop a good range for the concentration for your measurement. Okay, so look, detect limit. This one is sometimes you cannot detect. Why? Because maybe the size, this one. The size basically is uh, the intensity or less size and exponentially and the increase with the size. If it's too small, for example, less than one nanometer will be difficult to detect. Even if it's possible, you have to, you have to increase the concentration. Okay, the concentration also that is uh, scattered the scatter the increase with number of the particle. You have uh, even, uh, that is uh, 
they have more particle if scattered light is more than that. That's why we use our this method also can detect the concentration because uh, the concentration scatter intensity the linear equ equation there you can you can use this this instrument to detect the concentration or molecular weight another is a relatively relative refractive index as a relative is a relative to the your particle and relative to the liquid and this person if this difference is bigger is more like a, more sensitive for example So next is uh, show the size, size. What kind of size you use for the selection? And uh, that is basically we have uh, four different is uh, available. You can online order this one. So this is most often used. That is uh, like a 40 microliter and the small volume, the disposable, the plastic and cubic mostly used for the size. And it's here for this one, we use and make sure you use uh, the triangle here, logo this side. So this is the go through this polished and it goes there, not go from the side. And uh, we also have uh, the big volume here in the, this and uh, uh, plastic cell. And that is a special one. So this is uh, just a, uh, need like three microliter. So this is a capillary. You put this in your liquid get it and uh, suck the just three microliter and put there the light goes through this also can do measurement. This one is also available. If you contact me, I can yeah, you can borrow from me there. So this is uh, for the course. For all this one is alcohol or water based. If that is not water based, this one, you all make some corrosion for this and the cell, you can use the course, you can get this. So for the sample requirement, for the sample, you should be consistent of well dispersed particle in liquid form. Okay, the sample has to be very stable and well dispersed. For the liquid, for this person, what should be should meet the following requirement? First of all, this alcohol, water, or some any this person should be transparent. Transparent and no fluorescence based on the laser. Laser we use the red laser, 633. And then free of the particle contamination. And then note dissolve, swell, and coagulate of the particle. If you this this person dissolved this particle, of course, that is the particle no present anymore. And have a known roughly index because we want to compare with the particle there. Has a known value of the viscosity. If you do the temperature change measurement, the, this viscosity should be and within 2% change, cannot big change there. And the low back scattering, scattering background scattering, if it's your liquid self, get a huge scattering, that will be a factor measurement, okay. So based on this DRS measurement, you get a result, you get, get two, the different analysis. One, you can, you can get this uh, cumulant analysis, you get this uh, table. And then here you get a mean or Z average size, okay. And the second is you get is a poly dispersity index. Give you like a, if you point it smaller, that it be better. Okay, that means very narrow in the distribution. If it's a big, means you have multiple peak or wider spread. This. So second is the distribution analysis. You get the distribution of the intensity distribution of this. Okay. So here I show the distribution. Here shows the result. Here's a. Uh, Korean, Korean, this. So your you get table result, and typically you can see in the table you have the average, the temperature, and the file name, and you also can add more information you want. 
if you click the setting from the table here, you can choose, for example, you can add the mean count rate. And this gives you a lot of information based on the mean count rate, the rate change. And also you can get the volume distribution like a D10, D50. This is uh, like a 10% uh, volume, what is the size? And 50%, 9% volume like this information. Yeah, statistic information, you can get this. You can put the tape and if you if you want. Okay, based on the this correlation function, and it also can give you some idea if you note just from the distribution from more advanced information, you can you can look at this graph and then give you the information. For example, for this, this correlation here. Let's say I said, okay, this uh, correlation, what is the correlation here? This correlation is, uh, I said, you collect at zero, uh, time at zero, it collect intensity. And then after the uh, microsecond, it collect another one, C is created with uh, zero. If created perfectly, that is, uh, is one. So that means the same. And after like 10 microsecond, they decrease, means the particle they are moved and the intensity is get lower and the correlation will be going down. And then this gives you an idea when this particle moved, how long they can stay there. If it's move quick, means a small. If it's a big, move very slow, means a big particle. Very quick, means a small particle. They give you an idea. For this one here, you see quickly, they're going down the correlation changed, that means a small particle. Here, this is a big particle. And then for this also here gradient, this one. If it's very steep, if this go here, very steep, ideally going vertically, then means all particles same size. And then the brown motion, they're same, and the same speed, and the quickly all they go down there. Ideally, is that of course in practical is in reality is impossible they have different size and then some move quicker and some move slower and then they give you this gradient is like slanted like this if this one more slanted like this here means your distribution is wider if it's a steeper means your distribution is narrow so they give you the information and the look on the baseline here, if the baseline is flat, means no big particle. If you have like this one, means you have a, a glom or some big particle is present, give you that information. And then also intercept here. If at the beginning, you see the intercept is not one, so that means your suspension is not stable or some, some happened there. And so that is a quality issue here. Okay, so based on this, and they give you a lot of information. And look at the quality issue. Also, so here is uh, what indicator give you the particle, the aggregation, and the contaminant is here. Typically, you don't know just the analysis of one. You should repeat three, at least the three or five. Okay, repeat the measurement. Based on that, you can look at, for example, the three result. Look at here. C average is get this. Not randomly, it's get gradually increase, and then based on the mean count rate, the count is also increased. Even the count compared to the Z average, they get much bigger. And then this gives you an idea during this measurement time, two minutes, the something happened. The Z is aggregate and they get this big with this. And then this one, yeah. So this gives you an idea. And this aggregation or some, this one going down here, maybe a sedimentation happened and this. And can look at that. Okay, so you can look at this count, the the average and this rate give you the information there. Okay, here that is uh, also based on this. Uh, if you input the inception and this um, percentage, this basic percent should be about ninety percent. This inception should at least like a. Uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. If you 0 0.1, 0 0.2, that is uh, too low, must, the quality is low. If it's uh, like more than one, also it's not normal, okay? That means, okay, your maybe the noise is too high and they give you this information. Based on this inception 
and percentage is this also indicator of your quality data. Not that you just get your result, you also look at your quality is that. So ideally for this three measurement should be perfect match for there. If it's not a match for there, you see there and this change and this is slightly, they are changed. That means your sample is not perfectly and stable and something happened here. Okay, so this and uh, advanced this and uh, the size also give you the based on this uh, AI like uh, machine learning and based on your result give you a suggestion like this based on the uh, interception is if it's low if in if it's uh, baseline is noisy or not and if you use the for the direction for for the detection or some like this information based on your result they give you this checked awesome like this one give you that me tell you no quality issue is good for this one, if something happened, the data is still useful, but you have to be checked. Maybe that is a slightly the aggregate happen. Okay. For this one, is the quality is poor, they tell you. Okay, for this one, you need to re-prepare your sample. Okay. So that is based on machine learning, give you a lot of information on this. Okay, so if that happened, for example, if some, they said, okay, the forest and uh, this this one, this fluorescence happened, it give you information, the flare or something like fluorescence. In that case, you can, they give you a suggestion. Okay, and then for example, fluorescence, we have in the instrument, we have fluorescence filter, and then you can insert, select the fluorescence filter, you can exclude this fluorescence. In this, after that one, you can simply do this select filter and then improve the quality of this. So this and the quality, you can look at this quality, the guidance can give you suggestion. Okay, so this uh, basically and the summary is the advantage is a uh, wide range and the small volume. And then the most important is the independent result from research index. And the minimum amount, and this uh, concentration depends on the sample. Another most important correct is uh, the, you can complete the recovery of your sample. If you you have a very small sample after measurement because this is COVID, you still you can recover this sample. And then only this limitation is you need to make a very stable suspension of this. Okay, let's quickly move to the second is uh, Z potential. Okay. We always talk about the stability for this uh, uh, colloid. Why is that sample in and uh, particle in the liquid is uh, stable? Basically, the particle inside they have two force. One is the attract attractive force based on the vulnerable force. Another the repair the repair each other. Rep rep repulsive force is uh, electrostatic. Is the charge because all the particle particle self, they are same charge and surrounded by the opposite charge, also same priority, they repel each other. So this set the potential is a measure how strong this potential. And then that is the indicator is your suspension is a strong, is a stable node. So this, and if you, how to make the stability, you can do two different ways. One is you can, Functionalize or attach this uh, macromolecule on the surface, make it separate, and then that the particle keeps the distance and then makes stable. But this one, even the chemical is a simple but uh, irreversible. This and once you functionalize, you cannot, yeah, you cannot change this. But the electrostatic method, this one, you can mix this particle if you want to make it stable, you can use a different liquid. Or, for example, you can change the pH for this and liquid, and then make them adjust the Z potential, make them stable. This, this method is reversible. Okay. So here is the Z potential in the graph. Here, this particle is a negative, negative charged. 
On the surrounding, this is a thin layer. This is positive charge. This is tightly attached on the surface. This is uh, called the surface the surface potential. If we are not we are not not measure this. We measure this this loosely here sleeping plan of this one. This charge and this repel each other for that. So we measure this one. This is also called the, the double layer elect electrical double layer. For this charge, we measure use it. Okay, this potential and this uh, repel each other. So that is the potential. For this one, the potential, for example, uh, in a uh, buffer, if you or some liquid, if you change the pH, you can see this the potential from positive can change to negative. For here, use this one, use a uh, low pH, also it can stable. And for this one, high pH also can stable. But in middle, some some value, and then they are not stable. They are a sediment, and then go to the bottom here, it can kind of make a stable suspension. So this high Z potential, they are very stable. And low Z potential, they will form like this. And what value it should be in very stable or not stable? Generally, if above 30 mid volt, and then this high stable, and then this here limited stable here. And then if it's below 10, we said it's highly unstable, the rapidly in the coagulation with this. So how do you measure this? So this is a cell, this potential cell, and this electrode. And basically we apply this code, this electrophoresis, is we measure the move, movement of the particle inside. We apply electric field, and the particle charge the particle move to opposite electrode, and then we measure this mobility. How to measure? We use this method, the laser Doppler uh, value symmetry. This method, because this acoustic method, use the light, use the laser. And this laser should, if the particle move and there, there is a frequency shift based on that shift, and then we can measure the mobility. Okay. This mobility and can what it can change to this, this potential here. And for this one, and uh, this uh, pH value and ionic strength, and this also affects the potential here. So this, on the last measurement, we measure the mobility, how the quick the measure. And this mobility here, this get, depends on this Z potential, okay? This rest is a, is a constant for a certain liquid. And then we can convert this in potential can remember. And for the sample limitation, to measure the potential, we need excess the scatter light. So this sample, first of all, concentration cannot be low, and it's enough particle scatter. And the size, we know the smaller size scatter less, less intensely light. So the size has to be large enough and at least like a 3.8 nanometer. Roof index, this is the same thing for the DLS. The diff big difference from the liquid, and then you have more scattering. So the potential measure they use the forward, forward angle. Okay, it's not back scattering, so this one. So this laser beam will be passed through the entire. Okay, is the uh, country too high? Of course, it affect the intensity. Cannot be too high, it have to be a certain day. And the potential advance, you have an attenuator to adjust this transmission light. So if your suspension, your liquid that is very conductive can be an issue. Maybe the heating and dual heating, and this can affect this measurement. Also the electrode degrading and the sample degrading, and also can affect the measurement. This because this electrophoresis uh, happened there. So for this cell and the potential, this is a commonly used cell, and this for the water and the water and the alcohol. So for this one, deep cell, this is uh, you can use quartz cell here. This is for some not suitable for this polycarbonate material. Sometimes it can liquid can make corrosion for this plastic. You can use this deep cell. 
And then, so this summary for this potential and this phosphorus for the size is uh, and the 3.8 nanometer to 100 micron. And some of you said, okay, you have 100 micron. Okay, that is good. So, and I have a particle and uh, 20 micron. Can I use marry this one? That depends. Even your particle may be in the range, but if your particle in the cell, in the cell, you cannot make all stable. They just the particle they stay on the bottom. Even you apply electric field, they doesn't move. In that case, you cannot measure the potential. Even you, even in the range, your particle also be floating in the in this uh, suspension. They are move and based on the electric field. So mobility like this here minimum and uh, volume only like twenty microliter. This that is a uh, and uh, minimum maximum concentration here. So that is uh, the potential is very important indicator of the how the stable of your suspension. So next is uh, quickly that is uh, I switch to the another new instrument for this one. This is a uh, more master size, 300 ultra. This one we will have this very soon. And this is uh, based on the laser scattering. We know there's a dynamic light scat dynamic light scattering also the laser scat. What's the difference for smaller particle? For very small particle like nanometer, 10, nan 10 nanometer, like the and one tenth of the wavelength, like 60, like 6 nanometer or less. So when they are scattered all the direction, all the equal intensity. But for big particle, if it's bigger, this is angle dependent. On the forward direction is huge. And the back scattering is very weak. This angle dependent. This information gives you the size. And we can use this and analysis for the size. So that is a, so this relation is a, discovered by this scientist and it's called the mirror theory. Mirror theory is a model, it's a predict of the how relatively intensity of scattered light based on the particle size, based on the wavelength, and based on this and the polarization and angle. And then they have equation. This scattered intensity is a function of this. And then what we can get, we can get this scattered light, we can direct the merit. And then we can get the particle size information at like this because the angle here, you see this? The big particle that is uh, most intensely is on the forward on this direction. And the small particle is all the big angle, the direction. Is. So here I show these are uh, 20, 20, and then they are how they are changed based on the based on the angle, it is they change a lot, most on the small angle here. If it's a uh, smaller particle here based on the angle change very small like this. So this is a uh, scatter intensity. Scatter intensity here is angle. And then we we can measure this, okay. Based on the text here, we have different angle we measure intensity. We can see this graph, okay, get this one. So that is a direct measurement, okay. You, you will ask, okay, we want to get the particle size. How we can get the particle size? Directly measure, they cannot get particle size. They cannot they just get the intensity. So we based on the mirror, the model, we make our equation. In that equation, we input the viscosity, roof index of the particle, and all that based on that model, we generate our, this graph. If we generate our graph, is match, perfectly match to the measurement. We think, okay, our, our model is good. And the input is the value and the river index is important. And then that size will be our size. So this particle size, okay, even the dy dynamic scheduling is not directly measured, is based on this simulation you generate. So for this one, you see, we have to input our accurate refrain index. If you change the refrain index, the particle size will change. That is for this instrument, for this method, your, your sample, your particle accurate 
reference index is of matters that we change the size. If you have, a, for example, serum particle, but you functionalized, you don't know this and functionalized or changed this reference index, that will be affected with R. Okay, this is uh, how the instrument works. Here, this inside here. So these are uh, two laser. Here is a red laser, blue laser. You can use different laser for the smaller size or bigger size. Here is the back scattering. The most uh, is uh, forward scattering for this and many different angles scattering. And for back scattering also have this. This is a flow cell for this. For this one, what do we measure? We measure this uh, is uh, radius. Zedius is a uh, diameter is the uh, duration. You see the name is different. And for the DR, DRS, we get is uh, hydrodynamic. This is the duration because this one is most is uh, important. The mass, the body of the mass is more. That one dynamic scattering is uh, more like diffusion, how the particle is moved. For that one, is for example, if you have a, a fiber, if you have a like a flake, and then all you have a sphere, perfect sphere. If they in the suspension, they move, speed is the same, the three move same. And then they treat this fiber, they treat this, and this flake equivalent of this uh, movement of the sphere. This sphere diameter will be the information of your, your fiber and your flake. This. So this one is used uh, sc scattering. Scattering the mass more matters. So this based on the mass and this get this, this diameter here, and this is called the okay duration of the radius. This sometimes, for example, for protein, if you use this method, use the DRS method, their ratio give you the conformation and this information, structure information, and give this. <clears throat> so this is a schematic of this. And like here is a cell of the dry powder cell. You can put a display and this, this process you put here and then go this and then go use the liquid and the flow of this. And this is a wet, wet sample like a pen, like a this, <clears throat> some pen, some stuff there. And wet you put here, we use a, this process in water and the sonicate. And then they can flow this, this flow cell, flow this and then go to waste, go to waste and use laser shooting on this. This is a quartz cell, okay? It's a measurement. This is the idea. For this one, you understand all this. After this measurement, and then this goes to waste, you cannot recover of this. Second is go through this is flow cell. You need a big amount. Okay, so this is not small amount because this goes through, flow this cell. Okay. So also after this measurement, so if you DRS, DRS you just like a discard your the cell, you just use once. This one you have to be clean up. So for this measurement, so even measurement very quick, but this clean up. And this rinse, this also take time here. Also need a big amount. And they, so that is covered my next slide. For the limitation is for this measurement, you have uh, the powder, you have to be at least like a five milligram or 100 microliter for this amount sample. And you need a very accurate refer index for this one. The time consuming need to clear up and can change it. But it's a very wide range of this. If it's some sample, you cannot make a slip suspension, you have to use this method. Okay. The software is the same as our cell size, it's much easier to use. Okay, I think maybe I take too long time and I will end of the presentation. Basically, we have these two instruments can cover the particle size from nano to millimeter, this. And we can do the measurement of this. And then any question? Thank you for your attention.